Let me now invite the Chairman of the Board of Governors of the NIFS, Professor Atula Sumati Pal, to address the gathering. Thank you. Good day to everybody. The 40th anniversary commemoration of National Institute of Fundamental Studies, inaugural ceremony. I would once again like to welcome the Chief Guest, Dr. Sita Rampola, Honorable State Minister of Skill Development, Vocational Education, Research and Innovation, Mrs. Deepa Lienage, Secretary to the State Ministry, Guest Speaker, Professor Prasad Katulanda, Federal Department Faculty of Medicine, Senior Professor Ranjit Premlal De Silva, Acting Director of NIFS, all the members of the Board of Governors, Research Council members, Founding Director Professor Chandra Vikram Singh and all the past chairperson and directors, all the other guests and invitees, Professor Deepal Subhasinghe, Chair of the 40 Years Commemoration Committee and its members, all academics and non academic staff and students, dear colleagues. As you all know, this institution was established through a Parliamentary Act, Act Number 55 in 1981, which was passed initiated in July, passed in September. And as we know, the aim and objectives was to create an interest and to provide facilities and studies, in particular fundamental studies and advanced studies to initiate, promote and conduct research and original investigations in fundamental studies in general, with particular emphasis on mathematics, physics, chemistry, but I want to reiterate and highlight life sciences and social sciences and philosophy. Later, the act was amended in 1997 to say it's taken in the broader sense, all these subjects. So it's not just laboratory sciences, it's, it's the very important, every aspect of life to be researched. And the first inaugural chairman was the former president, Jaya Jayavadana. We may have political differences with him, but this is one of the most inspiring uh, steps he has taken as the president of the country at that time. I really appreciate that. Then the brainchild behind the whole concept was Professor Chandra Vikram Singh, along with Professor Mailvanagam and Professor Amrasekara and few others who had contributed to conceptualizing this Institution of Fundamental Studies at that time. And his tenure was taken over by Professor Cyril Ponamperimo from 1984 until 1991. I'm not going to read this because the director has already uh, read through his email. But again, this was the origin of the institution, which was a great requirement at that time. Now to follow all the chairpersons until 19. 2015 were the presidents in the country and subsequent chairpersons were Professor Samaratunga, Professor Vikram Singh, Professor Vijay Kumar and Professor Janaka Ekanayaka along with the list of directors who served and contributed to the development of the IFS which was NIFS later as mentioned by our director Professor Prem Lal Silva. Now, the Institute of Fundamental Studies was actually established on the 4th of February, 1982. This is again a landmark event because all of us know it was our Independence Day. So at that time to dedicate that day to open National Institute of Fundamental Studies was a remarkable thing that itself shows how important the whole concept was considered by President Javadan at that time. And the board meeting so held, you can see the board room and the, the office of Professor Chandra Vikram Singha and Professor Cyril Ponam Peruma, which to date we use as our Colombo office. Then, as the director mentioned and Chalani mentioned, it was shifted to Candy. These were the old building renovated and the new building came up. I'm just going through very briefly the history, but it's beyond mere physical structure, a lot of contribution for a lot of personalities at that time to the country. Now, 
based on that very brief past which i mentioned which is much more than a marathon we are planning to commemorate the establishment of ifs and nifs over the next 6 months with many events monthly event hosted by each of six research clusters science education activities in parallel with science month in november press conferences tv programs youtube interviews on both scientific and social events launching the eureka vidu setta lottery which we intend to establish an independent funding to generate funding for research and also to establish collaborations within the country commemor to issue a commemorative stamp to mark the event open day for the general public and students of course depending on the pandemic situation and and the progress of vaccination program youtube documentary series symposium on ancient and tra traditional wisdom which is extremely important with our long standing history of this country a coffee table book which will be the left legacy of 40th anniversary for generations to read because it's extremely important monthly event a guest talk by a leading scientist in the area of specialization hosted by each research cluster young scientists association international symposium in september school science program understanding the world through science involving school children competitions short video competition in parallel with science week and finally we intend if everything improves to invite his excellency the president for event in colombo to mark the climax of this six months of celebrations i know it's a lot but we want to do it why why do we want to commemorate it's not just to celebrate what was done but to critically reflect i emphasize the word critically reflect and learn from the past to guide us on future directions that's why we need to reflect which is very important as you all know and i face as our director reiterated it's an institution with a proud history a center of excellence for basic and advanced research which has a track record for cutting edge research supporting and nurturing future research leaders but let's see what is there for the people now for us yes phd's patents job promotions international conference travel or what is beyond us that's what i would want to propose a culture shift research for people's benefit i'm not saying 40 years of nifs history has not done that but we have to make a bigger leap as professor chandra vikram singh had stated in his email we need a culture shift culture shift for people to benefit beyond our academic achievements and benefits that bring us the academics the glory the promotions the paper they are important but at the same time if we can't make a difference for the people to me as a scientist it's not sufficient why beyond us because we most of us are the beneficiaries of public education we use public funding taxpayers money the limited resources a state would have and also public knowledge we carry forward the knowledge generated by other people that's why it's very important to document and leave thesis papers all that but we are indebted to the people who have actually contributed for us to carry this legacy so therefore we are accountable not only the politicians we are accountable to the people we are accountable to the researchers who has done our forerunners so therefore it's our ultimate supreme duty to leave benefits for the people for the country for the nation and beyond to make a difference when i went through the history i realize 
on the left hand corner you would see one of the aims at that time 30 40 years ago to foster public understanding of science and there had been public series of lectures and in fact president himself yeah javadan had given a lecture vartaman akalpa saha nagata balapuruttu this is exactly what we are trying to talk but i want to propose that we should involve and engage the public more there are two different things involving is just you know they are passive partners they are recipients of benefits they are witnesses of what is happening they support us but engagement is a different thing they become true partners they become contributors not only just passive beneficiaries they are active contributors to development of knowledge share the knowledge and dissemination knowledge and particularly making a difference through implementation sciences service development and product development so that's to do that successfully to sell a product scientific product we make we need partners who will buy that concept and carry forward for us so therefore if reflect and decide on the future directions that is the culture shift i propose which is research for people's benefit it's particularly important consider the political cons- uh, context so our strategic approach should be aligned with the, the vistas of prosperity and splendor saubhakya dakma why research and development innovation and technology transfer the post industrial knowledge economy today clearly displays the close correlation among economic growth innovation and indigenous research capacity university based research has been the most effective driver of such economy relevant innovation as a result leveraging the public investment in universities to stimulate innovative research and development is now critically needed for a country to remain competitive in the global arena the most high ranking universities in asia has transformed from teaching universities to research universities in keeping with the global trend which is we see Uh, in the west that's why we all were the beneficiaries of a vaccine within one year in spite of the whole global divide of research science which 90% of research come from 10% of countries but we need to reverse that sri lanka need a paradigm shift to make the research and innovation co component of undergraduate and post graduate education which is happening under the leadership of our honorable state minister dr sitarambe pola i'm glad that it's happening in sri lanka a dream becoming a reality and in order to produce individuals with both creative vision and for innovation as well as sufficient intellectual breadth and depth to realize that vision so why is what is a strategy strategy is about capturing opportunities arising in a dynamic world so therefore we need flexibility to respond to novel ideas with solid potential for success for example covid 19 as i mentioned has created an unprecedented window of opportunity for research which is still not explored adequately sri lanka require innovative r and d contribution to re establish the economy to ensure national security and for sustainable development in strategically important areas such as organic farm that's what i mean by research for people's benefit to do that vision strategy focus success is not sufficient attitudes are the most important thing so that's what we need for a culture shift change in attitudes can't do no money and research only for the benefits of academics for intellectual glorification i'm not saying our scientists are doing that but we have to think beyond ourselves that culture shift why attitude change a bad attitude is like a flat tire to me you can't get anywhere without change so it's a crucial the leaders the research leaders for this country should be people who can change the attitude people who feel learn helplessness we are facing huge challenges because of covid less money funding but we need to bet on we need to do more research with less money little money money is not everything we need to generate money
and that is very crucial. So therefore, my last few slides, what is our duty is to create a good team in an IFS and good teams in the country and an ethos. What, I, what do I mean by the ethos? A place where people feel home. People feel everybody belongs somewhere in that institution. Dr. Premalaldi Silva, I am very grateful to you within your short period of time here. You have supported me to create that environment, this institution, and everybody feels it's their home, they have a place. That's why we have successfully launched this operation today. In that team, there should be visionaries, but visionaries alone wouldn't be sufficient. I suppose Professor Chandra Vikram Singha was one of those visionaries. And theoreticians, our scientists, but we need activists, young scientists who learn to become future leaders. On top of all that pragmatics. To me, politicians are pragmatic people who have to balance everything. And thanks, our state minister again, for your pragmatic approach and also His Excellency the President for supporting us in this endeavor. Now, I'm just going to show you something which I love. I don't know whether it will work. Yes, it should. This is what I mean by teamwork. See how chaotic this is. Just spend the next 30 seconds. Chaotic. The, the people is moving very slow. They can't start off. It took such a long time to take it forward. See here the difference of teamwork. They are ready. They are perfecting. They are waiting for the vehicle to come. Everything is organized. Everybody has been assigned the role. They know what they have to do. Vehicle arrives. The tires are changed in no time. It's take off. So this is a dynamic and efficient team. So final slide. The art of science will make that difference, crucial difference of making that culture shift for people's benefit. You all are scientists who know science to the maximum. But we need to invest more on the art of science. Thinking differently, doing things differently, taking up challenges when we are hardest hit. That's a scientist. A scientist to me is not only somebody who has a great brain, but who has a strong spine, thick skin, which is needed in that challenge against time. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity and asking me to speak a few words. And I want to thank particularly the, the, the real vote of thanks will be done by our co-chair. But I want to thank the committee, particularly the Professor Lakshman Disanayak, Professor Sivir Vijay Sundar, Professor Kulasuri, Professor Iqbal, Dr. Kumari and Dr. Shalini and the Science Dissemination Unit and everybody who contributed which supported Professor Deepal to make this event a success. Thank you very much. Look forward to the day and working with you all over the next few months. Thank you.